गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन सो इन द लास्ट लेवन लेक्चर्स वी हैव इंट्रोड्यूस्ड एंड वी हैव सीन फाइव डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ इंटीग्रल ट्रांसफॉर्म्स फोर ईयर ट्रांसफॉर्म्स लाप्लास ट्रांसफॉर्म्स हैंकल ट्रांसफॉर्म मेलिन ट्रांसफॉर्म एंड वेरी रिसेंटली द हिलबर्ट ट्रांसफॉर्म आई हैव ऑल्सो इंट्रोड्यूस सम प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ हिलबर्ट ट्रांसफॉर्म एंड इन टूडेज लेक्चर आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट सम एप्लीकेशन ऑफ द हिलबर्ट ट्रांसफॉर्म now i also want to highlight that we have solved some basic some standard equations which arise in partial differential equations like the wave equation or the diffusion equation we have seen equations different types of wave equations for example the acoustic waves or the waves arising due to the vibration of a medium and so on and further we have seen that almost all these waves they have a property that they change their shape as time passes or as the wave progresses in space we also call these waves as dispersive waves so today i am going to discuss the application of hilbert transform with regards to a very special type of waves called the solitons now these waves are studied by the celebrated benjamin ono equations which i am going to briefly highlight and followed by another Uh, soliton equations known as the kotovec de fries equation popularly known as the kdv equation now so what are the solitons so legend has it that there was a physicist by the name of sir scott russell and he was traveling in a canal over the city of edinburgh and what he observed was that there are the certain waves while he was traveling on a boat that certain waves were arising out of the bottom of his boat and traveling far and wide across the canal without changing shape and what was seen is that so that intrigued the physicist and he went on to study these waves and these waves are famously called as the solitons or the waves which are non dispersive which do not change their shape so i am going to start the applications of hilbert transform and later on describe some of the soliton solutions by these uh, equations that i have just mentioned okay so moving on so i have let's start right away with the example so i have an example which says solve so this is by the way boundary value problem so solve the laplace equation on a semi infinite domain so the equation of course is given by we are solving a 2d laplace equation and the domain is defined as from x from negative infinity to infinity and y positive so we are talking about a domain which is like an infinite plate so i can say that the plate extends from negative infinity to infinity and goes from from 0 to infinity in the y direction okay so what i see is that this equation and then of course my boundary conditions are given by u of x at x comma 0 is f of x so so as we see that this is an equation to be solved on an semi infinite plate well infinite in one direction so ux denotes the, the tangential derivative of the solution okay so then the second equation that i have is the second boundary condition that i need this is a second order pd the second boundary condition that i am given is u decays to 0 as the the domain so my my domain i define it by this variable r so my domain r given by this square root x square plus y square that extends to infinity so that's my so that's the the complete description of the problem so again if we were to solve this the standard way to solve this problem is we can apply fourier transform with respect to x and then we are going to get an od so we will apply fourier transform with respect to the variable x and we see that after 
using both of my boundary conditions I arrive at the following so I am going to right away write the solution in the transformed plane. So let us say my solution is u capital U with the transform variable k and of course the physical variable y we are taking a Fourier transform with respect to x. So my u of y is f of k e to the power negative so k y so let us take an absolute value here divided by i k. Okay, so notice notice that when I take the limit y going to infinity in this range in as the domain size increases I see that the solution in the transformed plane also decays to 0. So y equal to infinity or x equal to plus minus infinity or that corresponds to this transformed variable going to infinity. So either way the solution goes to 0 and secondly the second boundary condition is also sat satisfied that is the tangential derivative. So we have taken a respective factor to, to take care of this this, uh, this uh, effect of the tangential derivative. Okay, so then I am going the next step of course the natural next step is to take an inverse transform of this function. So before that let us see that this is a product of two function. So by the way my capital F is the Fourier transform of my function small f which is the boundary condition. So now my, my transformed solution is f of x f of k times g of k. So this is the product of two functions f of k times g of k where, where my function g of k is given by this following function. So as we can see in this expression and I can right away find the inverse transform of g. So the inverse Fourier transform of capital G is given by square root 2 by pi tan inverse x by y. Okay, so I am going I am writing the result straight away using my table of Fourier transforms that I have given in my course web page. Okay, so then which means which means my original variable u at x comma y is the transform the transform inverse of the product of two transforms well f of g times f of f of g times the f of f or this is also equal to the convolution of f with g okay so which means that my 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 result will be expressed in terms of this infinite integral which is the convolution integral. So integral from negative infinity to infinity f of t g of x minus t dt. Okay. So let us write this convolution to see what this expression is. So what I see is u of x comma y is after simplification I get this is equal to 1 by pi integral from negative infinity to infinity f of t tan inverse x minus t by y dt. Okay. So that is that is the final expression of my solution to the problem. We can ex further process this solution provided I know what this tangential derivative is. Okay. So before I move on I just want to highlight one fact. Let us try to take the derivative of u with respect to y and let us take evaluate this derivative and evaluate it at y equal to 0. So let us see what happens to this so called normal derivative at the, the plate at the infinite plate we are solving. So I denote this as my normal derivative. So when I take the derivative that becomes I can take the derivative inside the integral and I get 
my answer as so 1 by 1 plus x minus t by y square and then we take the 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 chain rule i am going to get negative x minus t by y square and 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 that's it so we have an, an integration with respect to t so what i see is that when i so so what i have is let us see what happens after we simplify this expression this is f of t with a negative sign outside x minus t divided by y square plus x minus t whole square dt now i take i take my limit so let us now take the limit y equal to 0 let us try to evaluate so y is a variable although y is a variable in the physical plane it's constant with respect to this integration so i can take the limit inside the integral to give me the answer as follows so this is f of t so y is 0 x minus t divided by x minus t square or this becomes x minus t dt or this is also equal to integral so 1 by pi from negative infinity to infinity f of t dt divided by t minus x notice that this is nothing but the hilbert transform of f of x right so this is the hilbert transform of f of x so what i wanted to show you is this well to begin with this particular quantity is nothing but the hilbert transform of f of x but f of x is my tangential derivative as described tangential derivative okay so as described by the problem so we see that my normal derivative in this situation is the hilbert transform of the tangential derivative So, so, so moving on, let us now look at some more important applications of Hilbert transform as I had already described in the introduction to this lecture. So, I am going to right away start by describing the solution to nonlinear waves, ok. So, nonlinear waves, ok. So, to, to to consider this this particular equation let us consider the most general equation describing the nonlinear waves so so to see that let us start with considering a linear homogeneous pd so linear homogeneous pde with constant coefficient linear homogeneous pde with constant coefficient so that's the first step of our of our study of nonlinear waves okay so i can write down this pde in the most general form this is a function of the derivative with respect to t so let us say that t is my variable time and also a function of with respect to the derivatives of x with respect to derivatives of x with respect to derivatives of y and with respect to derivatives of z of this solution let us say u bar of x comma t equal to 0. So, I can say that this is my this is my linear operator ok describing the solution. So, operating on this variable u and the result is describing the solution to certain nonlinear waves. Now, so, the moment I say I am seeking the solution which are showing the wave like features. So, let us assume to begin with that my solution is of the plane wave. So, I am going to assume a 3 D plane wave solution. 
let me say that this expression is 1. So, 3 D plane wave solutions of 1. Okay. So, I see that the general form of this wave solution could be taken as follows. So, this is e to the power i k dot x minus omega t. Okay. So, my k is my transformed variable or variable in the wave number plane. So, that could be k l and m and my x is my vector in the physical plane. So, x y z and so that is the wave in 3D plane wave solutions. So, if I were to, so this is my wave number as I said wave number and this is my my physical wa physical variable and further there is another quantity called omega where I define my omega to be the angular frequency. Okay, so, that corresponds to the variable corresponding to t in the physical plane. Okay, so, when I use let us say I describe this expression by 2. So, if I were to use 2 in 1 then I get my new expression to this original p d as follows. So, my expression looks as follows. So, instead of a t as I have taken a Fourier transform it will bring down a negative i omega and each derivative is going to bring down. So, the negative here corresponds to the fact that we have a negative here and then each derivatives of x is going to bring down a derivatives with respect to the corresponding wave number. So, i k i l i m. Okay, so, and then this is equal to 0. So, now in the transformed plane I have a new equation most likely this will be an algebraic equation as we have seen in many examples of waves that we have studied. So, in the transformed variable we study an algebraic equation. Now, which means if I were to rewrite if I were to rewrite my expression in 3 I get the following expression omega is equal to w of k l m. I have just separated out omega from the rest of the wave number quantities k l m and then well. So, this special form of 3 is also known as the dispersion relation of the equation. So, dispersion relation. Now, I have already briefly mentioned what is this dispersion relation. So, dispersion relation is the relation governing the variables in the transformed planes corresponding to the variables in the physical plane. So, my variable in the physical plane are x and t, my variable in the transformed plane are k, l, m and omega. Okay, so, so you, we can consider that the dispersion relation is the transformed version of the original PDE we are trying to solve. Now, most of the most of these cases in most of the cases where we are solving the wave equation the dispersion relation the, the, the relation that is to be satisfied in the transformed plane may not be identically equal to the value that we get when we solve the variable in the physical plane and hence there is a discrepancy of the solution in the physical and the transformed plane that leads to the so called dispersion in the wave or changes in the shape of the wave. Okay. So, so, again let me just briefly highlight some of the concepts I had already introduced when I was discussing some examples in Fourier transform namely the, the concept of phase velocity, the concept of phase velocity and the concept of group velocity. So, we have seen that my phase velocity let us denote it by C p will by mathematically it is described by this expression omega by k. So, it is just the ratio and my group velocity is the derivative of the angular frequency with respect to the wave number. Okay, so, that itself the second term can itself be a vector. Okay, so, and the, and the first one is a scalar it is also the phase speed. 
Okay, so so we have shown that in both these cases, the phase velocity is also the velocity of the individual packet. I have shown you some with some example. So let me just write down. So velocity of individual packet. Okay, and I have shown you that the group velocity is the velocity of the wave envelope. Envelope. Okay. So if if students recall, if we have a wave of the form that let us say that the wave has a slow mode. So I am going to describe a wave. Let us say u versus versus let us say x. So I am going to describe a wave which which oscillates with two different types of frequencies one the fast frequency the other which is the enveloping or the slow frequency then the the speed of this particular wave in this fast frequency denotes the phase the phase velocity and the speed of the wave in this enveloping scenario denotes the group velocity okay so that's that's a very naive way to describe the group velocity or the phase velocity via a simple example okay so moving on so i'm going to talk about a a soliton a soliton waves so to do that let us look at a case of so without going into an extreme detailed background let me just highlight the example first so i'm going to right away come to the dispersion relation of this example so the example is that of an internal solitary wave internal solitary wave in an inviscid in an inviscid st stably stratified stably stratified so all these terms are quite applicable for problems in relation to the study of water waves okay so stratified two fluid system between rigid horizontal plates okay so so what we are studying is a two fluids scenario in between two horizontal plates let us say that the plates are situated at height z equal to h1 and z equal to h2 okay and further to distinguish between the two fluids let us say that the upper fluid the upper fluid of well of depth h1 which we have already mentioned of depth h1 has density density rho 1 so i'm going to distinguish between the upper and the lower fluid okay so and it lies over the heavier fluid it lies over the heavier fluid of let's say of depth h2 and density rho 2 so these are my variables for the two fluids setup that we have and the fluids are located between the two horizontal or two flat plates okay and the height of the fluids are respectively h1 and h2 so of course my density rho 2 is greater than rho 1 since the heavier fluid is, is at the bottom and i am going to assume that both fluids are subject to gravity as well so both fluids subject to gravity so i have the effect of g and i am going to neglect the surface tension so surface tension effect between the two fluids and otherwise surface tension effect are neglected okay so for that i am going to write away 
state the result via the dispersion relation. So, this sort of a problem has been already published and worked upon by several physicists, several scientists starting from the celebrated uh, scientists Ono in 1966 in his in his uh, theory and separately by another another scientist Benjamin in 1967. So, celebratedly called as the Benjamin Ono equation. So, the dispersion relation for such an equation for a stratified fluid is given by this following expression. So, omega square is g times k rho 1 minus rho 2 divided by rho 1 cot hyperbolic times of k h 1 plus rho 2 cot hyperbolic k h 2. Okay. So, then there were several specific cases that were described for related to this dispersion relation. So, this is my dispersion relation. So, several specific cases were described by these two people. One of the case was described by Benjamin in 67 also called as the deep water theory. So, as the name suggests we in this particular example we assume that my depth of the heavier fluid the fluid which is sitting at the bottom the depth h 2 goes to infinity. Okay. So, so, which means the, the, the assumption in this case, so case 1, the assumption is that the height of the lower fluid, the height of the lower fluid is infinite, the height of the lower fluid is infinite. So, h 2 goes to infinity. Okay, further there is a second assumption. So, let us call it as A and B that the waves are long compared to the depth h 1 of the fluid. Okay, so, what it means further the second assumption further exaggerates the fact or exemplifies the fact that the height of the first fluid of height h 1 is small compared to the height of the second fluid. So, what the second assumption is long wavelength long so, long wavelengths compared with compared with h 1. Okay. So, I assume this is the situation k going to 0. Okay. So, long wavelength corresponds to small wave number as we have seen in some of the reciprocal theorems like Tau Tauberian theorems. Okay, so, then under these two assumptions, let me call this expression that I have written on top as, as my expression 4. So, if I use my assumption using assumptions A and B in 4, okay, which means that we have to take two limits we have to take. So, this is my expression 4, I have to take one limit, the first limit is h 2 going to infinity. So, the, the depth of the first the, the first fluid or the heavier fluid sorry the second fluid is going to infinity and then the second situation is limit k going to 0 and I fix for a fixed h 1. So, compared with the height of the first fluid the, the wavelengths of the, the water waves are long. Okay. So, the height of the first fluid is negligibly small compared to the wavelength generated from the wave. So, when I do that, I take the necessary limit and expand the cot hyperbolic in the expression 4, I get, I get my following result. So, I am going to di directly write away the result. So, I get the following dispersion relation. omega is c naught k minus alpha k times mod k. Okay, so, here I have assumed, so this is the, the, the most basic case the waves propagating in 1 d. 
the waves propagating in 1D.